I'm back already because um, I have music to talk about, and I thought to myself, well, well why wait? I enjoyed sharing um, yesterday, so I'm just going to keep on rolling like this, you know. And, uh, you know, if you follow, you follow my channel, I just go with the waves. Where I'm going to start is that I received um, a n new release. It's about to come out this month. But I got it today, and I don't even don't even have to wait to talk about it because I can already recommend it. It's very good. I've re I've reviewed them before. The Grip Weeds. I believe they're out of Boston. And this is the anniversary edition, remixed and expanded. CD of their album Giant on the Beach. And this is really good. I, I can tell you right away. From the first listen, that's, that is important. You don't always get that. I got the, you know, the one, the, the promo sheet to give me a little background on what's going on with this. And, um, I read it, but it's like I'm not going to regurgitate it here. This band are in the tradition. They come from the golden era, what I consider like the golden era of um, radio and and rock music. You know, the dawn of the Beatles, to be frank. <clears throat> they have... But this is what's great about this music. It doesn't sound... Like, um, I have one of their other albums, and this is, I like this better, but I'm going to go back and listen to the other one, other one, based on how good this one is. Recording of this is, is immaculate. But it doesn't so, just sound like students, or people who are paying homage. They own this music. This is a good band. Um, very Beatles-y, but, um really good songwriting. The references are there. I mean, there are many other references that, that I could point to, but the thing that stands out to me is that the songs in and of themselves and the sound, that big, beautiful guitar sound on those drums, too, really well recorded. It's the shit. Grip Weeds, Giants on the Beach. I got a sticker, too. It also comes with, it's, this will be um, released on January 17th, according to that. And it'll be uh, for a time limited edition, or maybe not. It's just the deluxe anniversary edition. Comes with a bonus CD of live, there's live material. Is, are there some rehearsal takes on here, acoustic mixes. I just popped on and heard the first track on this, and once again, from the very top, the way it sounds, how good the band sounds, um, this is really good. I can highly recommend the Grip Weeds. Now, the other thing that stood out to me, and you know I'm not a lyrics person, but I noticed that the lyrics were, were good to the point that it was like they did not um, stand out to me, you know, because a lot of times those hap that's what happens in music. My first impression of, of some lyrics will be like, boy, they just, you know, this is um, really not necessary or something like that, or that the lyrics will seem kind of trite or, you know what I mean? These, are, these lyrics uh, come across as good. And if there's a thread to this, which there probably is, and it probably mentioned it on here, and I'm just, I just want to tell you right away that I don't even need to wait to tell you how good this Giant on the Beach by the Grip Weeds is. Excuse me. Coming out this month, you know. I think they said the uh, release date is January 17th. So um, now you know. You don't even have to wait to find out. This is really good. He also sent this to me as well, like the, uh, excuse me, the back for a CD jewel case. So I wanted to do that to start with. 
Thank you, Agripweeds, for sending that to me. Um, thank you, John. I think John Dawson may be my connection. Not maybe, but it is the connection there. So, as you know, I went to Barnes & Noble, the one close to me yesterday. I really was not tempted to go to the one out west today until I saw a post from another local uh, friend. And um, he'd gone to the other one, and even though I had both the records he found, it was like, it was a David Bowie and it was a Pink Floyd, and I said, okay, I need to at least go look. You know, if he found, if, he, if those were there, two artists that I, you know, they're, they're huge artists that everyone knows, but I, I love them too, and, and I collect them, so I thought to myself, okay, so that means there's probably something there, and I'm glad I went, it's the bare bones of what's left of this sale, I can see by their display out at the big store out in West Omaha, the big one, this sale probably started a while back, probably around Christmas or so, and man, I can only imagine what I missed out on, and probably a good thing for my pocketbook. I can tell by the um, cover of this that, you know, many of these half prices have been sitting in the stores for a while now, for a few years, not going anywhere, so it's like this is what they end up doing. So I was really happy to get this at half price because I would not have paid full price for it. But I collect and I love Jeff Beck. It's Jeff Beck Live Plus. Now what I'm talking about is, even though it was um, still sealed, here's this corner that's worn from the years of being flipped and probably even I mean, might have been just that store, but it's got that wear where, you know, it's been in the store for a while. It's been flipped over and over and over and over. So the price on this was 40 bucks new, so I got it for 20 And heavens knows I was would not have ever paid 40 bucks for this new. I've only played one side. I love Jeff Beck. This is really well recorded. I've seen him live twice. Um, not with this particular group except Rhonda Smith. On bass, I saw him once with her, but Narada Michael Walden was on drums that t at that time. There's some new studio tracks on this, which I haven't gotten to yet. I love Jeff Beck's playing, so what I played, I love already. He, he loves to play the blues. He is so idiosyncratic that he will get me to listen to the blues. How's that? Jeff Beck, so I got this. I got two more. I had been, I'm glad that I waited and got this, because I'd been tempted in the past, this came out, Jeff Beck's um, Loud Hailer, this came out in 2016, and even though I think the, loud, the cover is crap, as far as design, it's trying to make a statement, which is fine, but as far as a cover, it's like, I think it fails, I'm glad that I waited, so I got this for 10 bucks today, half price, and my first impression of this is, again, Jeff Beck, first off, there's the blues on here. He's a blues lover, so that's to be expected. He plays the hell out of it in a way like no, really, well, no one else does. He doesn't imitate the old blues guys. He took what he learned and made it his own a long time ago. But the thing I've noticed about Jeff Beck with his management, and I think, this, I think I've got this right, that he is up for most anything as far as management flipping him ideas of ways to stay current or try ways of expanding or keeping his market young. So what I mean by that is that it turns out that this album, Loud Hailer, is him featuring these two young women. Backing him up, one a singer and the other a guitarist. And uh, my first impression is, as always, what brings me here is this guitar playing. The girl singing is, well, she's a young 
young, beautiful, beautiful young girl that can kind of wail a little bit on the blues, a little bit, a little bit. That's my first impression. Um, but you know, I'm really not that interested, you know, um, it just really seems like it's still really important to a lot of people that people can do that authentic blues whale thing, you know, and I guess it's because, like I said about kids in classical music, that we all have that potential, we just have to, you know, um, uh, feed it and let it grow. I don't do the blues, but I can do that. Now, I couldn't just get up and start howling and yelling the blues and sounding really good tonight. <clears throat> but I've done this before in the past because music is just in my DNA. Where I said, oh, I'll show you. I can do this and practice for a couple days or a week and then play the hell and sing the hell out of some blues. I've done it, you know. So it's, it's the roots thing that people just seem to need and Beck is one of them just loves the blues so like I said I'm just going off on a tangent a little bit about this record I'm glad I got it though add it to my Jeff Beck collection I should have grabbed I've got a Jeff Beck collection I don't know over a dozen albums for sure I love he's been on the Atco label for, Atco label for years now back in the day here in America at first he was on the Epic label Columbia Epic and then Atlantic Atco was the other huge, well, they were independent, huge independent. So it's got a custom label on one side, but it's got, you know, one of the old style. This was the uh, Atco label for the longest time through the 70s, 80s. And so I just have sampled this. So I, I'll find the gold on here. But I had, to, I had to share that, that I bought that. And the other one that I bought was, yeah, Score for Half Price. Utopia by Bjork. Now, I like Bjork. I actually, I love Bjork. Beginning with the Sugar Cubes. I can still remember the first time I heard and saw them on Snub TV, on cable TV. That different end, when Bjork got to that part where she kind of howls and screams on the song Birthday, sent shivers. So, um, but she does so much stuff that I long, I stopped trying to collect her a while back. And I started collecting her when I was, she was doing the um, individual DVDs. She put out a song per DVD. So I have several of those, which when it first came out was novel. But when you think about it, not when you think about it, but I even thought back then it was like, this is cool and a big waste at the same time. You only get one song and w one video, one remix. So, come on, you know. Anyway, I just <clears throat> touched on the first side of this. I love her work. I love how her work, and I'll, that's the proper work. I particularly like how Bjork music works in the context of the album as opposed to singles. When I hear one song at a time, particularly songs that have been played a lot, her voice is kind of not, it's not grating, but it's like, it almost sounds like the same thing, but it's not, it's, it's her voice, which is that's her timbre. But what she's doing with it and what's going on with each project really makes sense when you listen to it in the context of the album. I've got a few of her other albums, not, so, I'm glad I got this. Okay. Let me sip my coffee. How y'all doing? I see some folks saying hello. I don't know if you're trying to get me to respond to you. Um, I don't play to expectations. There's reasons why I'll speak to someone. It's all up to me, okay? So, just carry on with your business. People make recommendations to me also, and if I don't respond to it, that's that's kind of the response, you know. I do listen to a lot of music, you know. So what else is happening here? Okay. 
while fixing lunch today, I put this on, on CD. I have it on vinyl as well, Modern English, their first album, Mesh and Lace. This is the first time it was released on CD by 4AD. It's probably been reissued on, 4 8, on CD since then, probably. Um, I ought to look into it because this has extras. It's got their first singles all on the CD, along with the first album, which is cool. But the mastering is crap on this. Um, whenever I listen to it, in order to enjoy it, I have to EQ it myself on my computer. Uh, I just can't stand how thin it is. Uh, I really can't. And even, and, but it's there. When I EQ it, it's like what I want to hear, it's there, you know? This is a fantastic debut album, in my opinion, still. It still shoots sparks. And the fact that they had a huge hit it wasn't so much a fluke, but the fact that what they were doing was so innocently good. You know, they were just creating, and they were just... I met them when they, they came to Nebraska on the just before Melt With You blew up. Just as it was blowing up, they came and played a club in Lincoln, Nebraska. And I interviewed them for a fanzine that I was a part of. They were lovely. Mick Conroy, the bass player, is still a buddy of mine. We talk, excuse me, on the in on Facebook. Um, he's a friend of mine to this day. I love that. But uh, this is if you don't know this album and just know their hit, blistering, and once again calls to mind the recent passing of Von Oliver. I made the comment when I posted this online today that it. Von Oliver's work is part of my consciousness often because his work, he's graced the cover of so many of my favorite records. You know, so Von Oliver comes up again today. I'm going to keep going until I am done with what I've been playing, okay? <clears throat> I did play a few records today. I put some away and I kept some out. Here's one by a group that ended up being mainly known for production behind the scenes. Startled Insects, Curse of the Pheromones, yeah, is the name of this album. They have two albums, I just have this one on the Antilles label. Instrumental, I don't mind that there's just a bit of an 80s production um, sheen to the Iowa, I don't know. Sometimes that gets in the way of listening to some records. I'm trying to see if I can see the... Uh... Oh, that frustrates me how... As you get older, you can hardly see anything. 1980... I'm going to predict about 1988. I just 87. There, I was determined to see when this came out. 1987. They've done work for people like uh, Gold Frap and Massive Attack. And so... Um, adept at the studio and interesting compositions um, not soundtracky trying to be more than that but doesn't fit in any particular genre which I like but which also was the death knell for this band unfortunately doing any possible commercial um, success but I've had this for a while and um, just pulled it to play did I leave it out I didn't. I'm going to pull it out because I played this today. I used to, you know, Peter Gabriel is really important to the his, my history, but because I devoured his music when I was young to the point that I would, you know, like, you know, get sick of it, I, I almost never listened to Peter Gabriel. So I played this all the way through today, really enjoyed it. This is my least favorite, and that's how I posted it on Facebook, knowing that the way I worded it would cause some conversation and, and most of it good. Just a few folks, which I love to kind of find out, well, who is going to take this personal, you know, <laughs> foolishly? And just a few folks, you know. You know, just the, the mere fact that I worded it like, really, and this is what I said, really enjoying my least favorite Peter Gabriel record today. <laughs> Psychology, you know, 
Manipulation is happening all the time. People that understand psychology know this. I understand, and I don't know as understand as much as I'd like to. But sure enough, I knew that just by doing that, you know, you can kind of like separate the wheat from the chaff in a way. You know what I mean? You know, the way that people respond to things tells you a lot about them. It does, you know. People who will come at you trying to point the finger. Oh, what's, what, are these, what are these doing? <laughs> it's fucking true. About me, too. This truth, no, none of us escape, so see. I'm not being condescending. This helps me stay grounded to know this shit and not be so fucking phony like most people. People are just so phony, right? Always trying to put on a front, impress people, try to, try to, you know what I mean? That, that sucks. So back to the record. White Shadow stands out on this, but on the overall, this is my criticism of this album, produced by Robert Fripp. As a Body of Songs by Peter Gable, this is a, the weakest group of songs I've, that he's put out in a group. It's the weakest. That's the deal, you know. He knows it. So there's a couple standouts, you know. Perspective is a really good song, you know. Um, Indigo. You ought to re-record that. So, enjoy this today. Complete different track, Magma. I'm not sure why I decided to play this today, but this is a live album. Uh, Retrospective Volume 3. Christian Vander. Powerhouse of a drummer. Interesting individual. I've never seen them when I was in Belgium on tour. I played the same place that they were going to play. And at first, it was going to be like, I'm playing there this night at the uh, Botanique in, with Sun Ambulance. And then Magma was going to be there the next night in one of the bigger rooms. And then they got rescheduled. Oh, I was so pissed because it was the end of my tour. I could have almost... I, I almost saw Magma that way. But I love this band. And um, they go back to my, my teen years when I first found out about Magma, I was thoroughly intrigued loving progressive rock music, but I was still wrestling with um, the remnants of um, what I call um, Christian um, propagandizing. I was, uh, my mind was fucked up because of that shit, and I thought it was evil. That music was powerful. There ain't nothing evil of you know, you take the evil from it. You can take evil from it if you want to. Once I got over that bullshit, because I actually sold their records when I went through this weird thing about, oh my god, you know. And then I then I woke up, you know, and got my sanity back. It's a matter of perspective. The music is very powerful, but there's a darkness there, not in all of it. Some of it is very celebratory. So you take from it what you what you put into it. I say, for the most part. Once again, when I make these comments about my personal views and values, whatever it means to you, you know, it's like it's, I'm speaking for me, okay? Just for me. You can tell me what you want, but remember, I'm just telling you about Derek, okay? You know, and I used to, I'll say this, okay? In the early days of making videos, I would every now and then get these people who would just leave these posts about you need Jesus and shit. And it's like, are you kidding me? Okay? So, played two sides of this. Funk Storung. Glitch Electronics from either the late 90s or early 2000s. Appetite for Destruction, I believe, is the name of this one. And even though it's, there is a datedness to this, I still appreciate it. Uh, because of the way that I work with electronics, I still absorb this stuff enjoyably, but also in a way where I'm, I learn from it. I learn from it just listening to it. How's that? Anything else I have not shown? I don't think so.
so I wanted to share that with you and that's 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 good that's good 25 minutes all right 